Very good afternoon to each and every one of you. Welcome to our part five of our Building a Legacy. Building your legacy dollar by dollar. So welcome to this is the fifth installment and it's the final installment that we have today. So what I see that today's topic is going to be building a legacy together as a team itself is quite interesting, sir. Because you mean building our legacy as a team, but it's supposed to be our legacy. So how's the, how does the team come into play or how do we play a part in the team itself? So I think this is something that we really want to understand more today. And we are looking forward to see how we're going to round up today's session with everyone here, the couple of hundreds of people that's going to be here together with us. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Hi. How are you feeling today? Hi, hey, Eddie. Yes, uh, I think I want to share my slides. You can uh, uh, hit so that I can come in with my slides uh, to share with the rest of them. Thank you so much. Yes, that's nice. Uh, so happy to actually really... Uh, let, me, let me just open my slides first so that at least... Uh, I know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm talking and I'm trying to do, you know, men can do many things at the same time, you know. I always, I always uh, share these things. It is God's creations that women are so powerful that they could do so many things at the same time. Um, while men can only do one thing. You know, uh, one of the things that I used to say here is this. The difference between men and women, you see, you see right now, you know, you, you see me like stammering and struggling. You know what? I was trying to get the slides on while at the same time, I'm not really capable. You know, God has created differently. Women are so capable in multitasking. So can they be very good leaders? Yes, they could. There are many fine women leaders all over the world, head of a country, head of a company, and look at it like Tamasic Holdings in Singapore. Yep, it's Ho Ching. Whether people can agree, disagree in terms of leadership, whatever it is, head of the world, there are many. Yep. So, so that being the case, uh, just now I was just trying to talk about, was highlighting the fact that women are capable in their multi tasking role. Like for, I used to share this very short story. A woman can be carrying a toddler, cooking, at the same time, on the phone, talking to her mom about she's coming to visit, and at the same time, she can even hear the husband who's in the room talking to his friend about this evening's football game, and they want to go and see, and the wife can scream at the husband and say, hello, we are going to my mom's place because she can even hear what the friend is talking on the other side. That's a woman. You know, men on the other, other hand, when he's driving, yep, suddenly his mind is thinking of something. Or even when someone is talking to him, he don't even know he's supposed to exit which turn. He will just forget and go straight. And even you, let's say your spouse is in the car, and you try to tell him, hey, you are, why are you not turning? He gives a dirty look and says, don't disturb because he's talking on the phone with someone and he will just miss all the turn. After he hang up, he turn and say, why you never tell me? <laughs> Sound familiar? That's the difference between a man and a woman. Okay, never mind, fine, fine, fine. Probably uh, maybe with all your loved ones, your siblings and or your children who are listening. And I guess maybe more than a thousand of you right now have locked in and trying to hear me. This is the last session, part five. All I want to say is, is thank you, thank you, thank you so much for giving me the love in the last five weeks. And many of you have sent me personal, PM me. And after the session, thank you so much. I really learned and so on. But how I wish for those of you who persevered without missing any of the session, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. I think I need to give you a special, can, can the rest of us give them a clap around the hands if you see someone and if you know you have been listening, this is the fee without being, I think you deserve, you, stand, you deserve a standing ovation for being persevered, persevering throughout the journey. And I just want to say, one of my motivation that every time that I come and I want to talk on a Saturday here is, is while I'm talking in my room, my family, my wife and my three children, my elder girl, Norisha, and my twins, Natasha Norris, and my wife, Noraini, without fail, they give me the moral support. They are the first one to sit down and on their very huge, big TV and mirror, whatever this Zoom, and all get excited. And the minute when I finish, the first moment, even before I walk out, when I know it's, it's over, 
I will hear live audience clapping for me. You see, that's the kind of love that motivate me week after week, whatever I'm doing. Okay. And in fact, someone sent it to me. Hey, Mr. Ismail, even though circuit breaker is over, looks like we still have to work from home in phase one. Why don't you continue for another four weeks? God bless. God bless. Yes, I think it's easy. But, you know, every time when I do it, it's just not, not anyhow been talking. I need to think. I need to put the slide. I think come next Tuesday, I'm going to office after a long, long time. Let me organize. But at the end of the session, I'm going to give you something that I will still keep in touch with all of you. Those of you who are still interested to know, I've started on a new campaign, which I will mention at the end of this today's presentation. Okay, before I go on to all the slides, quick, quick, quick recap. For those of you who are just joining me for the first time, welcome, okay? Love to, to, to that you decided to join at least the last session. But for those of you who missed one or two, we will also let you know towards the end, the link for all those that you have missed, you will get a chance to see. But most importantly, I just want to do a very, very quick recap. Part one, what was our key message? Ask yourself, recollect back, part one. First and foremost, we discuss about the myth of leadership that leaders need not necessarily be charismatic. Every one of us are leader. You don't need to be a born leader, even though some of them can have a little advantage because they have the qualities, but we have come to a conclusion, leaderships can be learned. So all of us who are listening here, we are all leaders. So that was the, one of the key things that we talked about as far as the uh, part one. Part two, we went on to leadership traits. Huge number we talked about, huge, sorry, huge amount of different values we talked about. Is it resilience, empathy, and many other things, ability to articulate the communication skills, decision-making, and so many things. If you can recollect back some of these things. Therefore, you know why am I trying to highlight? It's good that we sail through seeing one part to another part, but it is also important that we must make effort to embrace and improve on the various qualities that a visionary or good leaders have. If not, it's no point. How do we improve? That was all about in the part two. Part three, we, I remember we talk about leaders being source of light, that each and every one of us have the energy within us. Why people want to listen to us? Why we cannot carry a dark spot in our heart? How does that cloud up our mind? How we become judgmental because of that? And the huge amount of things that will just impede us moving forward because as leaders, we have to be forgiving and loving. Okay, that was a huge part that we talked almost an hour, but I'm just telling you in about just last 50, 30 seconds or so. That was in part three. Last week, part four, what we talked about making a million dollars because as leaders, as much as we talk about all the goodness and so on, we must also retire successfully. We must have the enough of our savings. We must build a, and, and our own legacy. And that was what we talked about, how one can either turn a property journey or whatever methods that you have, how do we build our finance? We talk about the basket theory. We talk about leveraging. How do we accumulate wealth? Discipline part of it. And that was Finally, today, we are going to talk about building a legacy together as a team. So now I want to just put it in real right perspective. Even though I'm going to talk about a fair bit about a company, 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 but actually it is not totally company. What is a company? To me, more than one person come together is already a company. In, do you know two of them can set up a private limited company? Yep. Yeah, a sole proprietor also can set up a company. In a family and a husband, wife is in a company together. You have to make decisions more than one. Even if you are a family of four or five people, a group of people and a company of people have to make a decision. Therefore, whatever I say at a visionary company level is applicable to small teams and a family and as well as anyone who coming together as you want to build and grow your family size. You see, in a family, you will have your boyfriend, girlfriend, fiancé, fiancé, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, grandchildren. Everybody will grow. But how are we guided by? If a successful company does that, can we have some of those values in our family too, in our smaller team? Let's not even talk about big corporations, even building a team. As a manager, can you build your team? How does the team people support the growth, building a legacy together as a team? 
So that's why a little bit I want to focus on team and some of the challenges and the struggle that I went through. Hopefully this one make it clear so that every one of you who are listening, you don't feel out of place because you say, hey, Mr. Ismail is talking very high level at company level. No, no, no. Every message I say, try to understand from your shoes, from your perspective, how you can make this applicable to you. Okay, good. Fine. So this is the thing that we talked about so much about it in terms of building a team together as a I'm building a legacy together as a team. And I'm just, uh, this is part five. If you look at it, the success of prop next or whatever that I'm sharing with you, would I have learned all by myself without managing a team? Would whatever the success that today prop next is achieved or even whatever achieved, can I just say, say that it is all about me? I was a hero. I was a champion God game. I think that's a real bullshit. I think the success is all about people, working with people. And today I must say, my growth, my success, I have to give, even studied in my, from my younger days, people have been responsible, who? My parents, the right values. And as I was going to school, who has given that confidence? My teachers. When I went into the army, who gave me all the knowledge and the confidence? My commanders. When I got married, who is the one who supported me and gave that confidence? My spouse. Then so what about in your family or children? What about your partners? when you talk and you strategize and so on, can therefore no man individually can claim for all his success that he is the almighty. And that's really wrong. So building a legacy together as a team, as you build people around you, your partners, your employed staff, whoever come together, they, everybody grow. Everybody also become a leader. Everybody is part of a legacy. Because when we are old, when we retire, when you sit down, when you reflect, then you will realize it was never a one man's job. So that's what I'm trying to focus so much about team. So how do we build team? Okay. And what are some of the values? I'm going to, because I just do not want to steal the idea and say hey, everything is a smart, come up with his own brain. No, 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 no need. We don't need to be, we don't need to be so clever because there's so many clever people are so many philosophers and so many people have thought about it because one of the key things I've been very upfront about it. I've read this book not one time, probably close to 10 times or more, um, 10 times, I'm not so sure. Definitely more than 10 times, okay? Not only the book, because I've taken the extract of the books to conduct seminars to all my group of people, my connections, okay? So some of the pointers, not throughout the seminar, at the start stage, before I go into some of my life examples, I'm going to take one or two, three points. Because this is the book that I anchor in my company when I build core values and so on, okay? So this... This, if anybody of you want to go and borrow a book or read a book, this is a very good book, but I bet you, you will fall asleep. It sounds so technical, but a huge amount of research is done. What is this book about? Actually, Jim Collins, and when he did the research, he studied about visionary company and comparison company. Comparison company does not mean it's not good companies. They are very successful name. Look at it, Chase Manhattan Bank, but on the other hand, today, Chase Manhattan is, is not as as visionary as Citicorp, if you look at the comparison. And then if you look look at it like some Sony versus Kenwood, people remember Sony, do you remember Kenwood? Kenwood was once in a big brand, audio. Okay, Walt Disney versus Columbia, but Columbia Pictures was also huge. Colgate versus Procter & Gamble, but why some of them has done it at this level, someone has done hugely different. So there was a huge amount of research and that's where I adopted a couple of these things from the book in running my company in the last 20 years. And I'd like, like to share with the rest of you who are building your company or team, you can definitely learn a lot more pointers from there. Okay, I'm gonna share three shattered myth. You know what is the definition of myth? Myth means they are not the truth. They are just, you know, people assume it's to be truth, but in reality, it is not. Okay, let's go on to the first shattered myth. Ah, this is where people always think, you know, people say that I want to be successful. I want to build a team. I want to build a company. I want to make a huge amount of money. And a lot of people think the more successful companies are, exist first and foremost to maximize profit. You know, people always tend to think, if you are a company, you want to do, hey, why you establish a company? Company must make maximize profit. But an honest truth, and I don't think if you have anyone who are the founders of the company who comes with such a philosophy or think about money as a 
forefront and the foremost, and it is most important, usually these companies are never successful. Even if they are, they don't last long. They are not built to last, okay? So therefore, if it is not the myth, then what does the company stand for? Why do you want to build your team? What do you stand for the team? Let me give you one example, you see. I just want to let you know, this was in a newspaper article in Straight Times, 1st August 2008. Well, that's, a, uh, I mean, 2nd August, my birthday. It's just one day before 2008. How old would I have been? Okay, 63, 73, 83, 93, yeah. So I'm 45 years old. At the age of 45, the next day was my 45th birthday. And this was in a huge article. And not only that, I was interviewed. Channel News Asia on the 1st August was running exclusive yep uh even even a ro roller scroll down on the whole day prop next terminates 2800 agents in one go wow you see if you look at it in this paragraph it said this will be in addition to its drastic exiting of 2000 inactive agents last week okay whether active or inactive it really doesn't matter you know why am i trying to highlight to you here is this you see, if you pray to money, if you think money is important, why did Propnex take such a drastic measures to terminate 2,800 agents one go? Okay, so as a leader, I made a decision together with my team, not me, together with my team, that all Propnex agents must be covered under professional indemnity insurance. Because CEA only came into picture 2010. This is two years before when CEA, Council for Estate Agencies, they are the regulator, the licensing authority. Before that, it was totally not strictly regulated. But Propnex, myself and my team, we stood up and say, no, in Propnex, every salesperson must buy a professional indemnity insurance to protect the consumers. Our key objective, our existence, our purpose is to make the difference in the life of people. So how can my agents be like cowboy and cowgirl don't even protect the interests of the customers? So we make it mandatory. So when I make it mandatory, I talk to my leaders, I talk, I managed to convince a fair number of people. And at that time, Propnex had about more than seven, 8,000 agents, probably about 7,000 agents. But these 2,800 agents, some were inactive, but not all. There were agents who were earning 400,000, 300,000. They came to my room, they make an appointment. They said, Mr. Ismail, I don't think it's fair for you to make it compulsory. Are you saying that I've been in the business for 10 years and I'm a champion agent? You mean I'm a crook cheap customers? I need to buy an insurance to protect? You're not being fair. And if you think you make it compulsory, then I want to leave. And you know what is the most shocking part? I negotiated with an insurer. The insurance annual premium is only $104. A guy who earned $400,000, $104 is nothing. But he, based on his principle, he said he will not pay. Then he challenged me to say, if you value me, you pay the $104, I will stay in your company. You know what I did? I give him a hug. I tell him, thank you so much for all your support, but I can't pay for you. Because if I pay for you, what about the another 4,000 agents who believe in our journey and decided to pay? Because we wanted to make people believe and the consumer believe that this company exists not about huge amount of profit, but about doing things right. So that is a courage. And I must be consistent. I cannot just quietly, okay, favoritism or you all are do. Those who don't want to pay them and I you see, if a guy earns four hundred thousand and the company get forty thousand, what is hundred thousand dollars? Hundred dollars? I can just quietly take out from my wallet and pass it to him in my room and tell him, "Don't tell anyone." But what kind of leader? I'm not a good leader, so I refuse to. And that's how two thousand eight hundred agents left. So okay, I'm talking about. And can you imagine when these two thousand, even though they are not so active? If one of them close one transaction in a year, active agents close one month, three or four. But even in one year, some of these people, they sell the grandparents or their uncle or their auntie. Even if they sell two transactions, I got 5,000 transactions in a year. 5,000 times 5,000 commission, it goes to huge amount of money. But I was not praying to money. 
because I wanted to set the stage right. Even though there's no regulation, we must make it what we believe. Okay, so this is why. So setting up a company is not all about maximizing profit. Look at it. Again, then we did something in 2013. Before, in fact, we started this program before that. In 2009, we went to Cambodia, we built a school and then handed over to the Ministry of Education in Cambodia. We don't want to go to any middleman. I remember as Kampal village, the following year, we went to Triumphong, built another school, and then the Singapore commissioner was there and then we handed over. Then we realized, hey, we are going so far. Yes, I think they are needy. But even in Singapore, there are many people in need. Therefore, 2013, we decided to... Uh, focus because 2013 was Singapore celebrated 50th anniversary, uh, National Day. Yep. And uh, sorry, 2015. 2015. Yep. But from 2013, we decided to give it to community chess. But in community chess, we only focus children, schools, people who can develop. The, those people who are in real need. And that's where every year we committed to give half a million, half a million, and we make a pledge that PropNext, together with my agents, even my agents contribute and chip in, yep, and to get, and the company pledge dollar to dollar without fail, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. In fact, last year we give more than 600,000. And, and this is about really thinking that, you see, can we imagine we can keep all the money because money is important or because company is supposed to maximize profit. Profit is the most. We don't think like that because money must be earned. People who need must also be given. So when this happened, when COVID-19, immediately during the circuit breaker, as a management, we made a decision. Yes, we will still give a half a million dollars as we pledge, but we came out with another $250,000 cash from the company and we already distributed it to the front line, those heroes who are fighting, who need, who need to be supported, who need to get that moral booster, and that's how we did. So we don't need to wait to say, because I'm talking about this, not because I'm boasting and glorifying what problems have done, but I'm just trying to tell you for those of us who are running a company, even as an individual, you save money, you get your Hari Raya money, you get your Chinese New Year Ang Pao. If all the money is all about you keeping and not giving a portion to the people who need it is only about all self-interest. So as I said, whatever I say, it is not about company, it's about individuals. Do you have or put your mind and talk about people who are in need when you have it? So this is very important. So it's, don't always think about profit. Don't always think of only having yourself maximum gain. Then you will never grow. Okay. That's all so much for the first part of the myth. Next, let's talk about two. Myth number two. The only constant is change. You know, this is a very common phrase people say, ah, yeah. The only thing that is um, persistent, the only thing that always remains is change. They say, embrace change. You know, there's so many calls. Yes, it's true. But let me tell you, yes, change will always take place. We must embrace technology. We must be part of it. But there's something about individual, you as a person and as a company, there's something that cannot change. Forever cannot change. Would you believe that? When I say, can you think of something that, when I say that you should never change in your whole life until you go to the grave and while the whole world keep changing? Does that make sense? Okay, to me, what is that? Hmm, core ideology. I'm going to explain. I think this is going to going a bit deeper, but don't worry. All those people who are 14 years, 15 years, 16 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 40 year old people also sometimes don't understand this. Okay? Don't get totally thrown off as well hearing me. What do I mean by core ideology? I'm going to explain the definition. Okay? To me, core ideology should never change. It is a sacred cow. What do I mean by sacred cow? Means whatever you do, this one will remain. Okay? So, let me... Ex and it is also applicable to individual. Eh? It is not only company. What do I mean by core ideology? Hmm. An important step in building a company or a team is to articulate a core ideology. Then I'm going to ask you a question. What is your core ideology as a person? As a person. As in the core ideology of your team, if you are running a team, 
What is the core ideology of your company that you're running? Do you have one? And honest truth, my friends, later I will share with you. When I started Propnex for day one, I didn't have this. When I don't have all these things, a lot of things fall in haywire. Things all crumble. Okay, let me just explain what is this about. So core ideology is simple. I break it into two parts. Core ideology, okay, means core values. What is your core value as a person and the purpose? So the company asks the same question. Individual asks the same question. As yes, an individual asks you, what is your core values? My core value is integrity, honesty. I love people. I love animals. So I will not hurt people. I'm respect. This is your core value, who you are. I will never steal. Yeah. I share things. This is your core value. Okay. This individual. Huh? Yeah. Then I say, what's your purpose of your life? Why? You see, we are all born as an angel to this world. So what is our purpose in our life? What's your purpose? So whatever you think, my purpose is to make a difference in the in, in, in this world. Uh, my purpose is to be happy. My purpose is to bring joy to the people around you. Whatever your purpose, you must know. That is individual. Then same thing for the company. What is the core value of the company? Why the company exists? What is the purpose of this company? Believe me, my friends. Even for your team, you built a team and a team of 10 agents, 20 agents, 50 agents. What is the core values of your team? What are you going to be guided by? And what is the purpose? Okay, this is very, very important. Okay, let me just explain. Okay, probably you can understand this better when I just show this to you here. You see, you can see core values. What do I mean by core values? The company's essential and enduring belief a set of general guiding principle, guiding principle, core values. I will give you more examples. Same thing for individual. What is your core values? And what is the purpose of the company? The company's fundamental reasons for existence beyond just making money, a perpetual guiding star on the horizon. You see, a lot of people ask me, Mr. Ismail, how do you get so much energy? Why are you so excited? Why do you always talk with so much of passion? Why are you are never tired about work? Why are you always very excited and want to talk and make a difference? Because I'm very clear with my core values and I know my purpose. And there is a perpetual guiding star on the horizon that brings the joy in you. Why a lot of people find it so difficult, even as an individual, why you drag to go to school? What? Okay, school is going to open for some of you come Tuesday, Wednesday. Why? What do you drag to go to work? Then I ask you a question. What is your core values and what is the purpose that you want to learn during that going to school? If you realize the purpose, the purpose of doing something is meaningful because you are going to be a better person and you know in the near future as a person you're going to make a difference to this world, then you should be a happy soul. Okay? So, so this is what I meant by core ideology, core values. And purpose. I hope this is very important. If at all you forget many things today, at least I hope some of you can do some deeper reflection. What are my core values and what is my purpose? And that makes a huge difference. Okay, let's move on. Now I'm going to share with you prop next core values. Okay, has this got any any interest or anything that you can understand from these things and so on? Let me just explain. How do I see this in terms of prop next core values? Acronym, easy. To remember, care. You know, you care for people, care. But what does care stands for? C, continuous self improvement. That means this company core values are to improve as a person, as a company, in the processes, in whatever we do. Continuous self improvement in everything we do. Second, autonomy and entrepreneurship. What does it mean, Propnex core value? which means to say in this company, there could be 8,500 or 10,000 agents regionally and leaders and key management. Every one of us have to work here autonomous. You shouldn't be told what to do. You take responsibility and you're entrepreneur. You are not blindly following rules. You are creative. We want people to stretch the mind. That's the environment we want to create. So this company's core values is guided by self-improvement, autonomy. And then obviously the R stands for 
respect and concern for individuals. What does it mean? I, as a CEO, has got no right to shout and scream at anyone. Even I have no right, or even no one have the right to come and scold the cleaning lady who didn't do a good job because the floor was wet. Talk to her respectfully. Respect and concern for individuals. And finally, we want to conduct businesses in the most ethical, honesty, and integrity in all aspects of our business. So now do you understand? When I say the sacred cow, my core value, I ask you now, 50 years from now, okay? Maybe I'm no more around because I'm past 50. Not maybe, I will, I will, not, I will not be around. Okay, fine, God bless if I'm around. Having said that, how can Propnex continuous self-improvement as a value 50 years later can change? How can, I mean, obviously other company can choose to, but my belief here is this, how can human being, the new millennials, you know the new millennials want to be more autonomous. They don't want to be guided. They don't want to be everything like in a box. They are thinkers. So how can autonomy and entrepreneurship is non-existent 50 years later? How can you say that respect and concern is not important 100 years from now? How can you say in a million years, ethics, honesty, and integrity in aspects of the business system? So if I'm so clear about my core values, then it becomes simple. Put it this way. My partners, when I started the company, partners were Christian, staunch Christian. I'm a Muslim. I had two teas. I have got free thinker. But we all need to be guided by certain values. And this is what we agreed to. And if you ask me a question, Mr. Smart, why are you so clever? You had it all, the core values all. No, 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 not true. When I started the company, I didn't put my core values there. Only when I went through, then I realized a lot of challenges. Things were crumbling and we were so stressed. And then I said, hey, 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 we need to be guided. Then only we nail all these things in year 2003. We, I started the business together with my wife, 1996. Four years later, Propnex year 2000 was formed. The first three years of Propnex was completely turmoil. Completely. Believe me. I think I lost a lot of my hairs during that period. God bless me. I had a very strong heart because in the army I trained. I tell you, I went to hospital more than one occasion for chest pain. Because you know why? Partners disagree in many issues. Partners can go and argue and call because we are not guided by our core values. In fact, let me tell you one small, small story. When Propnex started in year 2000, two years later, one of my partner, one of the big partner, within Propnex, decided to leave me. And the best part here is this, that partner did not even tell me that he's going to leave Propnex because Propnex initially when I formed, there were a few big companies that came together to form and he decided to leave us. And the best thing here is this, he took up a newspaper advertisement to announce the severance of ties with the partnership with us. And he sent out a press release. Journalists called me at about 4 p.m. and asked me, Mr. Ismail, we have received a press release from one of your partner that they have severe ties with you and they're announcing it tomorrow. Are you also sending in your press release because we are writing an article. Can you imagine I as the CEO of the company running and one of my strong partner decided to severe ties, telling the press because we were not talking for a period of time. Can you imagine what kind of stress would have been? And can you imagine when all my, all my agents tomorrow wake up, they realize, ah, you're one of your big partner and 2,000 of your agents are going to leave problems and how come we have to read it from the newspaper? And these were all a very stressful moment. Why? And I will tell you, we were not guided by. The partners see different values. Either he values certain things in different way. I don't want to comment. I don't want to talk negative. I'm happy for everyone because we all came together. But he saw different things. And that's why it was really stressful. But we quickly call and make a press release. And the next day, I assembled 2,000 of our salespeople and I have to have the courage to explain to my 2,000 people why one of our partner and his group of people choose to leave us. 
And I just humbly explained to them. Look at it. Why did we come together? We came together simply because the economy was going through the challenges due to the Asian financial crisis. 2003 was SARS. Like the pandemic now, SARS in 2003. And this exactly happened after 2002. And then I was telling all our people to say that, hey, because the weather the, it was, so, was a stormy weather, the sea was so rough, we all came together, different partners, like a sampan boat, yeah, and we all tied the boat together so that the base of all the, you can you imagine if four or five boats come together, you cannot capsize. If one small boat go, one, if it is in a, a thunderstorm and a big wave, you can capsize. So when four or five of us come together, the base become wider. So I say that that's why we came together so that we can be stronger, so that we can sail through the weather. But one of them felt that based on the core values and all other vision, they say, no, 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 no. We don't agree with you. The land is there. We want to go here. In fact, they were putting a lot of slow down our movement. So I told all my rest of my agency, we wish the partner the very best because they think they want to go to your motherland elsewhere. I promise you, I'll bring all of you together now faster because we are very clear to homeland where you can see your loved one. That's my duty. So can you imagine as a leader, sometimes you will never know what will hit you. So, so, but you have to have the courage, you have to have the confidence. And thereafter, then I realized, my goodness, my goodness, I cannot be running a company. So I'm just trying to tell you, even as an individual person or a manager or a company owner and so on, if you're just running your team and then you realize why are people are leaving and then you get upset about it, you feel he's not been loyal to me and how could this be? And then you've got a lot of emotions running all over you. Don't be, be happy, know your purpose. Set your core values, okay? And what's our purpose? Our purpose is very simple. So we identified and truly we realized PropNet's purpose is it's not about selling houses. Selling houses is anybody can sell. But why PropNet is different? Then how did we become the number one company? Why am I? Because our purpose is not about selling house, but is to enhance the quality of life by providing professional value-added services. So we are very clear. It is the quality of life of the people that we want to make a difference. This is not about money. It is not about selling a home. It doesn't matter today we are selling a home and whether, whether we are going to use it virtual tour. What is it? It really doesn't matter. How we sell, it doesn't matter. But the end result, do I make a difference in adding value in the life of the people who engage our services? So that is our purpose. So that's how we started to book up for me. Okay. So fine. I think I'm also worried about time. Now it's about 3.45. I will not go too fast. Obviously, if I go too fast, you can stop me or give me some indication. Let me talk about myth three. So we talk about two myths. Myth one is all about profit. I say, no, 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 no. It is not about all about profit. Yep. So company don't exist hugely just for purpose of about, about profit. Myth two, we talk about, hey, people say that the only thing constant is change. Say, say, no, no, no. Everything you can change, but you can't change your values, ma. We are here for one purpose as a person, as a company. So there are core values and purpose. That one we don't change. Myth three. I'm only talking about three myths, so don't worry. I'm not going to bore you so much. Visionary team or companies play it safe. You know, why do we get mediocre results? Mediocre results means what? Why some companies or some team perform? Why some individual are millionaire in terms of sales or some people only do 50,000, 100,000? Because therefore, people who does it well as an individual, as a team or a company, they don't play things so-called safe. When I say not safe, mean it is not being that you do things anyhow but you go out of the box. And let me just give you an example, okay? Visionary things, companies make bold commitments, bold. And I want you to remember this and you will enjoy it, okay? Big, hairy, audacious goals. Big, hairy, audacious goals. Sounds like what? Rambutan? Or some of them say this one sounds not a crude. No, 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 no. Easily pronounced, b hack. 
B hacks. So what is your big, hairy, audacious goals of your team as an individual? Do you have the drive and the motivation to set the target to say, yes, I can earn a million dollars. Yes, I can do the job better. Yes, I can manage my team more effectively. Yes, I can be more productive as a person, as a team, as a group, as a company. What is your big, hairy, audacious goal? Every company you know, when PropNext started, how did we start? We started as Norris, just a two-man company. Why Norris? Norris is my wife named Noraini, N-O-R-I-S, Isma. We started our office just 350 square foot. It is like your two bedroom together or your living hall and, and your dining. Yeah, you know, HDB, three bedroom, which is so small, it's already 700 square foot. So our office was only 350, such a small, tiny place. Then after, so we grew by in smaller stages. And that's where in some time later, Norris and Pruling, another of our good friends, Joseph and Alan, my partner, came together and we started First Class Consultants. And then from First Class Consultants, a few other partners came in and that's where we created PropNex in year 2000. And then in year 2017, PropNex and DWG merged to become the largest real estate company. So what am I trying to say here is this. Why some companies remain as two men to 20 men until today, or some of them close shop? Then I ask a question, what was the big, hairy, audacious goal? So as leaders, we are so passionate about things. We always not say think big, talk big, but we want to build, build the core values and build what the company can last and grow. So every one of us should think of, uh, when we talk about big, hairy, audacious goal means uh, something that give you the excitement, something that give you the energy, something that will give you the juices within you that every day when you wake up, you're so excited about going to work or do the thing and being responsible and being accountable. Okay, so I think due to time, I can't spend so much on this particular point. All the listeners, probably well above thousand of you are listening. All I want to say, my friends, welcome to the, this world of living life to the fullest and let's have our B hack. Can you all of you, the young ones and everybody say it quietly, B hack, big, hairy, audacious goal. Okay, so these are the three myths that we talked about. Okay, so, so for prop next, it was never about just remain. Even right now, you see when, when we, be, we, be, we are today the Singapore's largest agency, Okay, and then why did we bring the company to the main board listed and then 8,500 agents and more than 10,000 agents, even when we open offices in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam, it was never our desire. You see, PropNex today can open offices in 10 other countries, Cambodia, Myanmar, Bangkok, wherever it is. Then I can tell I'm there in 10 countries. No, 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 that's never my desire. My desire, if I go to Indonesia, in a matter of five years, I must be one of the key players. If I go to Malaysia, in the next three, five years, I must be the number one, number two in Malaysia. So ours is always about adding value to be largest. Why largest? Because we want to add value to the people. Because we are very clear in our values and mission. Okay. So this is how we meant by big, hairy, audacious goal. So as a team, you should be guided. Whatever your team performance, your sales are, as an individual, as in a family, as a person. Okay. Next thing. I wanted to share with you this very short story. And can I just request each and every one of us in a very humble way. I want you to really hear me this. Even if, you have been, if some of you suddenly got distracted because, hey, what is this guy talking and you're fiddling your phone, put down your phone now. Hear me this. Clock building, not time telling. Hear me again, I repeat. Clock building, not time telling. The success of, of PropNex is all about clock building. What do I mean by that? Just imagine, as I narrate this story, I want you to imagine. Imagine you as a person, nobody have watched, nobody have a clock. Nobody knows the time in Singapore, okay? You as a person are the only one who know what is the time. And you have this ability, when you look at the sky, or you look at something, you look at the sun, or you look at the shadow, you know the time. And assuming anybody who wants to know time, you're, you're working in an office and there are, let's say, 100 people. And every time people want to know the time, they come to you, you say, oh, time now is oh, 9.30. 
and then another person come what is the time now what well, time now is 11 20. don't you feel damn bloody good because nobody know you're the only one who can tell time but let me ask you a simple question if you keep telling time your whole life will be miserable can you imagine if that out of the 100 people, 50 of them come and ask you one time during the day, 50 times you're telling. And let's say if you're working, if you go on a higher level and you go to talk, you're working with 200 people, employees. So what is your life? Your life is only telling time. So what's so good about you know how to read time and you only tell time? You're time telling. And I'm just asking, why don't you build a clock? So when we talk about clock, it's not mean it's so sophisticated mechanical clock. We say, hey, how can you know the skill? No, 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 no. What am I trying to say? Now hear me and listen to me. Since you know this skill about reading time, why don't you impart this knowledge to the hundred people? That means to say, you can even draw in a piece of chart and you can paste behind the wall or in others, wherever commonly, in a common area. You say, how do you read time? Is looking at the stars and the moon at night or is the shadow during the daytime and general, whatever it is. So what are you doing? You are empowering people and you're building a clock. So by whatever your skill, a hundred people can do it better or as good without disturbing you while you can think and build new clock. Does that make sense to you? Okay, let me give you. And I've, imp I, I do, okay, I'll give you one or two examples. I, because I conduct these training and seminars for all my management staff. And, and I always even talk in my lingo. You see, if one of my staff come and tell me, Mr. Smile, we've got five computers and I just changed new five photocopy machine. But suddenly the agents come and say, um, every time there's a problem, they get jammed and, and there's a problem and people are complaining, people are not happy and they come and scream at the customer service and then we have to go and solve the problem. Sometimes we print for them. And I just have to look at the key manager and ask a simple question. Hi, looks like y'all are telling a lot of time. Why are y'all time telling? Why don't you build a clock around it? So what's my message? I say that you're telling me problems after problems. And in the last one month, even though I spent so much of money to put a five brand new photocopy machine, you say people are not happy and therefore you're trying to solve the problem every day. Then where is the problem? So when I say clock building means going to the root of the problem. So what we did was quickly we got to go and understand is it the paper quality that I buy is not so good because 70 GSM versus 80 GSM. Or is it that the inch, then we realize the whole suite. So what we did, we put our customer service officers as ambassadors next to the photocopy machine during the peak hours to understand. Then we realized, oh, I got 20 computers, four computers linked to one photocopy machine. But when they print, the, the system is not connected. You print, but it doesn't go to this printer. It can switch on to another printer when somebody's doing. Then you come and look at this photocopy machine outcome you never cannot print you get angry you print 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 you press 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 everybody's frustrated you come and shout and scream you get angry because you are rushing for appointment then i realized there's a problem the problem here is first and foremost we put the computers and the photocopy we never wire it right or actually we wire it right but it, it jump when there's jump so we need to resolve that bug number two there must be clear instruction at every computer where does it go you see see all this, so what am i trying to do you just hear me i'm talking about solving the problem at the root which is known as clock building so that the rest of the staff the rest of the day everybody can life can go on after we did that another one week the customer service became ambassadors to explain to every agent in one week later everybody knows and we solved the problem can you imagine you don't solve the problem what will happen another two months People will be unhappy. Because of that, some agents will be fed up with the company and even resign and leave. And then staff will be so stressed, also will resign. Everybody become unhappy because we are telling time. So that's a key message about this story I wanted to say. So in whatever we do in our team, okay, even, your team, even as an individual, you get so frustrated because you think it's not systematic. Every time I lose item, every time I have to search for it, then I say, hey, why are you telling time and get so frustrated? 
build the clock around it. Be a clock builder. We are all clock builders. And visionary companies, companies like Propnex can last and grow is simply because we strongly believe in clock building, guided by our Tobit. Okay, now you understand. Wow, let me time check. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to get uh, distracted because it's the last session. I want to be passionate about it, but I still want to be mindful. Let me just share one more thing. Guiding value. Never pray to money. Believe me, never pray to money. It will blind us and we will compromise our core value. You know you have a core value? You talk about honesty. In the, but the minute you start to pray to money, that means you, you think money is most important. What will happen? You will not do the job right or you will not. You know, there's some companies when deliver the product is, is fake items or why, why? Or they want to use cheaper material or cheaper cost. Why? Because they lost their purpose and they are not guided by it. That's right. Believe me, if you want to make more money, don't pray to money. Money will come by itself. It will come in big amount as long as you do things right with the right core values with full of love, okay? So this is important, guiding values. Huh? Next thing, my personal philosophy. What gives me the energy every day to go to office? What gives me the energy to talk to all my people regardless of whatever the problem? Because I never stay with the past glory. Past is good, achievement is good. You just, you need a pat on your shoulder, but it moves on. And I used to say this, and I've been quoted this saying many times, hundred over times. I don't know how many hundreds, okay? On, on a platform, on my seminars and my convention, I've been quoted in HR magazines and so on. The day when the company fails to add value to its people is the day that one should leave elsewhere for the sake of their loved ones. The day when the company fails to add value to its people is the day the people should leave elsewhere for the sake of their loved ones. What do I mean by this? I am very close to my heart. So I never think I'm biggest, I'm the largest, we are the number one, listen to me, you must stay in problem. No. Then we will go the slippery slope down. Therefore, the company exists based on our core value to continuous improvement. The first C-A-R-E, the continuous improvement. So it's not about I'm number one, it's what else can I do? How else can I solve the problem? That's why it is all about adding value every single day, every moment to every people we come into contact. So that is important. So what's your philosophy? What would you like to adopt? Next thing. Building a successful team or company is about loving your people. Remember we say the start of the thing, the legacy is all about building a team. A team is human beings. Human beings are all about people and loving our people. So what do I mean by that? You see, next success is about my management. And one or two new members who have joined me, they are not in the photos. Yep, uh, uh, because this photo was taken a couple of years back. My CFO is not here. My COO is not here. Uh, and my IT new director is not here. Many people. So we have expanded my uh, independent directors as a main ball listener. So this is has expanded by another, another probably half a dozen people or in fact more. But I'm just giving you as an example from here is this, the success of this company is about its management team. Okay, you as a leader and all the management team have a similar values in their mind and the similar passion, similar heart, how powerful it will be. Yeah, that's the team. Okay, so these are all my leaders. Propnex is a key manager. These are all my leaders. And I've got Propnex for 200 leaders. So we have a leaders retreat last year. This year, unfortunately, because of COVID, we may not be able to go last year. They went to Ho Chi Minh before that they went to Thailand. Leaders, you see the 8,500 people are looked after by 200 over leaders. And the leaders must have a similar passion, core values, belief system. So one leader with your core value the entire management belief and the same love is spread to our leaders. So our leaders will spread to our managers and our salespeople. So that's the way it works. So leadership is about being the ability to influence the right thinking, the right values to everyone working with you. So next success is about all my leaders here. Okay. And obviously, it's beyond that, it's all my, many, these are all my bootcamp facilitators and my bootcamp, these are my agents. So can I say my agent have not contributed hugely? My agent. So that's how. So it is never about Ismail, but it is about a team 
but everyone have a similar values, similar vision, similar passion, and that's how we spread this to many, many, many groups of people. Okay, so now you look at it, three thousand people. Oh, this was one of my convention the year before. Uh, President Halima was our guest of honor, and then you can see here huge number of people. And I think yes, uh, my mum. I can see my mum in between in the pink color uh, scarf. Uh, in between the president and myself and my family behind it. So, so what am I trying to say? Again, it's the people. So the success is not about you only know everything. about. Okay, just now I said core values are about even individual. But when you want to be a leader, you must bring your values and whatever you believe and make other people believe. That's why we got a huge amount of training and platforms. Okay, never, we never stop. This was last year convention okay this year unfortunately because of covid we are hoping we can do this is uh bill was a president of singapore this is our deputy prime minister uh, Heng Sui Ket, was our guest of honor and thousands of people coming to us okay so uh this is um, yeah dr dennis we and myself remember i said of in of the many milestones that we went through in 2017 uh dennis we is in one big company more than thousand sales people but why did Dr. Dennis Wee choose to partner with Propnex and merge together? And, and I was so touched. And this was at an audience at the hotel when Dr. Dennis Wee went up and he said something. I decided together with my key management that Propnex is the only right company to merge because it is not about money. He said that. I almost teared. A man who is so well endowed, who has a much older than me and who have been in the business, started the business earlier than me. But he said, I want my people to benefit the maximum for the long term with the right values and the right system. And I think there's no better platform than Propnex. So this is what we meant by leadership and building that people came together. So this was part of our journey that we had. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. Time for zero three. I'm very, very mindful. But yes, said, I'm going to go a little bit fast. Uh, I hope all of you are enjoying because this is the last session. Please bear with me now. I'm very certain more than 1,000 or oh, 2,000 of you probably are, maybe are hearing this. But having said that, very quickly, in the next five, 10 minutes, I want to just wrap this up. Five points towards being a successful leader. Okay? One key thing. Here's this. One should not be judgmental about others. I mean, we can have opinion, we can have something because we are human, we got emotions, we can, okay? But we should not be clouded by this because honestly, we don't have the right to be judgmental. Let everybody exist at their comfort. You see, in my company, we have got so many staff who are working for us for 20 years, 23 years, even before Propnex was formed during the Norris time and so on. Okay, so we let them be with their ability, they're taken care of, they're paid that much, and they can just do. Same thing to my agents. I cannot be judgmental that all my leaders are the same. So is it, I cannot be judgmental that all my children are the same. Or for that matter, my partners are the same. So we don't have the right to be judgmental. Okay, this is something is really, really interesting. I learned, okay, if any one of you, the thousand of you, if you think you still got this one weekend, or even if you're free, if at all you want to understand the concept of being judgmental, there is one movie that you could see. The title of the movie is The Shack, S-H-A-C-K. The Shack, S-H-A-C-K. I repeated it twice. You could see this movie. It's a, such an inspirational movie as a family to see the concept about do you have the right to be judgmental. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very well uh, award-winning movie in my opinion but I'm really not for sure. This is something judgmental. Next point. If, because why am I trying to highlight these five points? Because this is the last session that I'm trying to finish up this particular topic. Forgive. Not being able to forgive, regardless of how much pain and hurt is inflicted, will only make me helpless and a victim all my life. Okay? I mean, the little, little thing, you just get upset. But after a moment... Uh, even a couple of months, if there's something very huge, that you're in a huge argument with your mom, your dad, your loved one, your partner, forgive. Because at the end of the day, as angels we came, we all will leave this earth. So whatever pain hurt you have, let us not be a victim or be helpless. 
for give. Okay, this is the second point. Third, I think this is something just a reflection. Denial. If I often face problem or difficulties, I'm already in a denial mode without realizing that I am the cause of most or all the problems. You know, if you always say, why me? Why me? Why it always happened to me? Why people always don't listen to me? Why always whatever I do, it goes wrong? Yeah. Why the other person always want to attack me? Why the other person always want to sub sabotage me? Whatever you can say. Whatever I do. So you always keep saying about all other people around you or the situation around you, the world around you is all not fair except you. Then maybe you have to reflect. If I often face problem or difficulties, I'm already in a denial mode without realizing it's not that that person is a stubborn person, but that person didn't realize yet that I may be the cause of most of all the problems. Only through realization, we can step out of it and then make a difference. Okay, so this is the point number three. Point number four, guilt. Okay, because many of us may carry a guilt. It could be someone that we have hurt, someone we have done. It could be a huge mistake or it is something that we did it in our childhood or it could be in any part of our life, during any part of our life. Carrying guilt leads me towards being sinful. And there's only one way is to let it go and make good to spread unconditional love. It could be a sin that you carry because some of our, our loved one passed away and you think that maybe I've not given the best of that care. Or maybe I did not say I love you to my mom or dad before they pass on. Or it could be your, within your, between your siblings. Or it could be anyone that you are carrying the guilt that I am responsible. As, as, as long as you carry your shoulder become heavy, you feel sinful and you are dragging. And when you feel sinful, you carrying the guilt. And if you don't let it go, how can you even spread love? you become a victim. So that's what I'm trying to say. Let it go and make good. Okay? And then spread unconditional love. Finally, power. We all want to have power, right? We want to be leaders, right? We want to grow in our life, in our future, everything we want to do. So the ultimate power of a leader is his mindset. The mind of abundance that we can, like a king, give Give and give an unconditional love to his people. And I would say God the Almighty has given me this power of abundance and guidance all these years to give unconditional love to all my people. And that's where the people love you and they want to give you multifold. So when you are conditional, you're selfish, you always think about yourself, you're calculative, it's your job, it's my job, it's you cannot do, I'm doing more. You, can you imagine, even I as a CEO, when I started to come here as a partner, okay, oh, this partner, how much you do? This partner, how much you do? This partner, how much you do? Am I doing more? Should I be paid more? Should I take more? Or we, we, whole life, you will only be calculative. How to grow the company? Ask me. But every partner has his own strength. In a family, we have got different strengths. Can all of us come and with the abundance mindset, give and give and give? It will be an amazing thing. Believe me, life will be so, so, so powerful. Okay, good. Let me just move on to the next slide. Yeah, my goodness. I'm, I'm, this is an, a special, special bonus one. I want to give it to you. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I want to stress upon this. Okay, before I go into this, something I, I, something that was not even in the slide, I want to say, hey, yeah, I mean, I, as a CEO of PropNex, and you know, from the part one, part two, part three, part four, you know, my humble background and so on. And some of the younger uh, millennials or even the younger children, sometimes we don't have patience. And we want to be multi-millionaire, billionaire in a short card way. Sometimes we envy people like Justin Bieber, uh, Ed Sheeran, Billy Irish. Yeah? They are 18 years old. Or young people 
who make the millions. But you must understand, even Ed Sheeran, how was he discovered? And I understand, and I understand from my children. I, I remember going to the, uh, his concert when he was here in Singapore. Huge crowd. My children were all having fun. Yep. But myself and my wife were there at the VIP lounge. But okay, we were cool. But I felt that he, his success, did he come on a platter? And I heard that he was singing in the like um, MRT over there. We call it the underground tunnel and so on. Basking, singing, earning dimes and, and pennies. But he was discounted because... So how much he must have gone through in him, the belief in him, the never give up attitude. So how much he must have trained himself. Did it come... Today he's a multi-millionaire, $200 million net worth or so, or whatever it is. But how much effort they have put it in. So does it come easy? So I'm just telling to all the younger generations. Good. Don't be envious of these people. Be happy. But then ask yourself, do you believe yourself? Do you take the right course? Or do you shy away when there's a platform that comes? It's not me. Yeah? Or do you take charge and say, I will? Do you make effort and keep improving every day? Is it your voice quality? Is it your whatever skills that I want to be there? Even though if I'm not number one, I want to be there among them. Or do you fear hard work? Or do you every day imagine, I want to have a castle, I want to have a bungalow, I want to have a thing, everything. But you, you, you are not thinking about what is the difference that you are going to make in the life of other people that the other people are going to give you so much more money because you spread, you spread these things, the value add, the creations. What is your creation to this world? Have you thought about it? Yeah, I'm not really talking about the younger people, those who, everyone who are listening. So we should be very passionate about never think about shortcut to make money. Okay, it never lasts. I, and, and I admire all these people, be it uh, Justin Bieber, or so many people. You know, sometimes when I hear some of this music, either even American got talent, and most of the time, or many a time, when I see talent and their voice, I tear. It just is just so spontaneous because I feel for them. Because I admire them. Their courage, their confidence to go out and make a difference. To prove the survival. Yep. Okay, come. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, time, time, time. Huh? Oh my God, I'm already on my tail end. What is this? Oh my God. And one other thing I want to say here is, whatever you want to now want to make a difference, this is most important. Oh my God. Okay, simple. You can understand this easily. Oh my God basically refers to obsession. Whatever you want to achieve, you want to have a good grades in school, you want to do well as an individual in your work, you want to build your team, you want to do an individual as a salesperson, or do you want to build your family, or if you want to achieve bigger things in your company, whatever, are you obsessed about it? The thing about Propnex and our key management, we are really obsessed about it. We don't talk about work, we don't talk about time, we don't, when a job needs to be done, it will be done. And we take massive action. We all have to take massive action. We cannot give up. We cannot just move from one place to another place and we say, oh, there's a traffic block and then you turn and come back. Find a way to overcome that massive action, whatever you want to achieve. And finally, with these two, we still need to have the guidance of the grace, the almighty, the creator. Go to that quiet moment and ask for him and cry for help if need be. Give that quiet moment. Show me the path. Almighty, the creator. I want to make a difference. I want the strength. Give it to me. Because no man all by himself can achieve because he's the greatest. No. You know, sometimes I talk so confidently. Even my wife sometimes thinks I'm a person who might have my head swell and big and I, I, I think I know everything. Sometimes I'm very... I really put my points strongly at home, but not maybe outside. But I still want to say humbly, without the support of my family, my loved ones, I'm, I'm not who I am. Believe me. And same thing, without the support of my staff, my partners, I am not who I am as a CEO. Without the support of my team leaders, my managers and agents, I am not the CEO of the company. 
Yep. So I still need the guidance of grace. Okay. So for each and every one of us, remember this. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Good news. I have come to the end. Okay. I just want you all to follow. I think if you look at it, uh, I watch previous four parts at our official YouTube page. Um, you can find out. And then also I want you to subscribe to our Facebook. You will also try to post after this session in the Facebook. I will put the links to the part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. So if you are following my Facebook, I'm talking about the prop next Facebook. You know, many of you try to come and become my Facebook, my personal Facebook. Uh, 5,000 is overwhelmed, but I've also got a page. Even though you request, I will ask you to go to my 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 page. My personal page is Ismail Gafor hyphen prop next. My personal page is 5,000 all over, but I'm talking about prop next reality. Okay, so you will hear a lot more information. And one more thing that I'm thinking about here is this. After the circuit breaker, I'm going to do podcasts. I mean, probably every week it will be an audio. Uh, some advice, it could be 10, 15 minutes. I will talk about different things, about leadership, about life, about experiences, about motivations, about being focused, about achieving. If you like my voice, podcast, you will not see my uh, video, but audio. Uh, this is something I'm planning towards to launch this within the next two, three weeks and so on. So stay together, stay tuned. I think as a family, as a group that some of you have come together during this period of time, I just want to really... Uh, do the little difference that I do. And finally, for those of you who are interested about real estate property and so on, next Wednesday, ask your related question. 8 p.m., uh, you can talk to any of my uh, salespeople or eventually you can look at some of our Facebook. Uh, if you are following, we will put the link where you can ask the real estate question. So next week, 8 p.m., I'm going to take another one and a half hour to go and ask, answer all your questions that you have. But... The last time when we had it forerunner myself and Calvin Fong, I think we got hundreds, hundreds of questions, but I cannot answer all the questions. And then I will rank the more popular or more people asking a similar question is what I'm going to do. Because property is something that we also want to give it to people. Even though circuit breakers is over uh, phase one, we will still continue the journey to keeping in touch. Okay. So with that, yes, this is where you can scan our QR code. We are PropNext Privilege member and also like our Facebook so that you can get all the necessary information of the PropNext Institute. So with that, I have come to an end of my session, uh, about one hour and 15 minutes. I just want to say thank you once again to each and every one of you for all the love that you have shared and you have spread. And I really hope the five-part series has been meaningful and has been helpful. And if you like it, and I think once the links are all there, please share it with a few of other of your loved ones who have not seen this. Either part one, part two, part three. You know, huge number of people spend a lot of nights looking at Netflix and so on. But if you think there's some meaning in whatever I share and it can make a difference, maybe you can even refresh yourself or for that matter, can share it with someone. So with that, I've ended. Eddie host maybe one or two questions we can take. We don't need to take too long. After all, it's a Saturday. Let people have their time with their loved ones. Eddie. Hi, uh, thank you, boss, for sharing so much with us, especially reminding about clock building and time telling. But the thing is, there are not, not many questions today. I think they are enjoying your, your delivery so much that they may be too occupied to ask any question. Maybe I just open to the floor. Is there anything you want to clarify so that we can um, just say over the air? Actually, really, no worries. If there's no questions, I mean, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So either, as you say, people are hearing or people are accepting or even, even people uh, think that maybe it's not so, whatever, it really doesn't matter. We respect that. If no question is perfectly okay, uh, as I said, uh, what's important here is this. My simple desire is only one thing. Let all of us stay united as a family. And if you want to make a difference, first and foremost, it all starts within you first. You have to make that right thing, the right call, the right heart. And the next most important is the people around you. Your family comes first. Your parents comes first. Only when you can resolve within yourself, your family, your parents, then only you can spread love to everyone. So with that, let's let's take it as at the end of the session, wishing each and everyone an amazing last weekend of the circuit breaker. And I really hope that moving forward, we will go and stay connected to my podcast and all other things. 
Have an amazing weekend. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Ismail, for sharing so much with us. So everybody stay safe and then hope to stay connected with everyone. We may be distant apart physically, but we can all connect via the online platform, for Facebook and the podcast itself. So hope to hear from more of you. If there are any other questions, feel free, direct it to our teammates, our consultants. We'll take it on Wednesday itself. Thank you very much to everyone. And we see everyone very, very soon. Stay safe.